I'm going to show you guys how I attach the lines to my spools. Now, whenever you buy one, you want to make sure that the actual line is attached to the center. So I'm going to show you how we do that. But what I'm also going to use is a piece of heat shrinking tube. You can buy these quite cheaply. And this piece is a three millimeter internal diameter. And you can use a bigger piece depending on the size of the line because the idea is they're going to move in. It's optional. It just gives you a little bit of grip, which we'll see in a minute how important that is. Let's start off by running the piece of heat shrink through the line. And then just slide that up out of the way. Now the length of the heat shrink is actually related to the diameter or the circumference. And what you can see here is that it's left about a one to two centimeter gap inside. And that's going to give us room for the knot that we're going to create. We're going to take a loop and we're going to make a standard overhand knot. So there's a little bit of excess here, so we don't need too much of that. And just enough to help us tie the knot. There we are. Now the head here only needs to be big enough to take one piece of line running through it. And then the knot that I create, I just want to check that the lines are parallel. And there we are. Now I'm going to take a second loop. And I'm going to make a needle shape and thread that through the eye of the first loop. So this is what I've now ended up with. I'm now going to pull this shorter piece through the eye. And what you'll see it's going to do, it's just gonna turn the knot inside out and come through. What you will see is it's created a twist in this small loop here. So you're just gonna tease that out. And there we are. You've on back on yourself and this piece here can slide nice and easy. Now I'll move the shrinking tube out of the way just for a moment just to show you why we're using it. I now take this loop, I can put it over my spool and you can see that when I tighten it up if you were to run this way it will run on forever and it won't actually catch. So you meant to run the other way. But when you first come to do it, of course there's no friction and it's also rolling around. So what you would do is you would hold the back, pull it some tension, and then you would start to wind. So that's easy enough on land, but should it happen in the water, it's actually a little easier if you've got something to grip that line onto the barrel of the reel. You can see that the shrinking tube is just big enough to take both pieces of line through it. And there we are, and it's just going up to the knot that's there. So what we're going to do, we're going to apply a little bit of heat now and just shrink the tube down. And you can see that as it heats up, it just bends a little bit because it loses the stiffness. We can drop this over the spool and then take out the excess. And you can see that gap that I'd left, that was so that the tube wouldn't get in the way of the knot that we've made. 
And so now what I do when I pull it, a little bit of friction on there and it's stopping the drum from rolling around as much. So starting with the line up to one side, I'm just gonna roll my line now. And what you can see each time I go around in a loop, I'm actually adding a twist to the line. You can just see the line starting to twist there. So what's good when you run these, if you do a full width of the barrel in one direction, when you get to the end like this, if you then turn the spool over and now run the second run going back to the start position around the barrel, this run will have a twist going the opposite direction. So what you're now going to do is you're now going to spool up all of that line and then we come on to how to make the end.